We have no idea when the next alpha test or beta or full release is going to be for Marvel Rivals, but the game was so much fun during alpha, I thought it'd be fun in the interim to just kind of theory craft some characters that could join the game. At the moment, we only have 19 confirmed characters for the alpha, and I'm sure there's going to be more for beta and full release and so on. Uh, but for right now, we only got those 19, so let's add a few ourselves. Um, I might do this on a weekly basis, and I'm going to keep you guys updated with anything Marvel Rivals news related uh, just so you guys know when the next test is going to be signups and all that good stuff uh, but let me know in the comments below and maybe hit the like button if you're interested in this type of content so we're kicking it off with professor x and another big note that i want to get out of the way is that I'm using a lot of inspiration from other games to develop these abilities. So there might be some copycat-ishness, but that's just gonna happen when you have crossovers like this. I mean, Marvel Rivals has a lot of inspiration from Overwatch, clearly, but I also think it derives a lot of uh, inspiration from games like League of Legends, Dota, Heroes of the Storm, these MOBA type games where they're team-based and use various abilities on cooldowns, etc. So with Professor X, I've actually pulled from the MOBA side of things, and a game that I am very familiar with is Heroes of the Storm. I played that a whole bunch. And there was a character in there that is one of the most unique characters in the genre. And it is Abathur. So Abathur, his whole idea, his concept is that he doesn't have a lot of health. You do not want to be using Abathur in the front lines. Uh, he stays way back, but he can hat. That's kind of the term that they use. You can hat uh, your allies to provide them with various buffs, or you can use attacks from their radius of that character against the enemy. So I'm using that idea with Professor X. I think it can translate very well to Marvel Rivals. And I think it also stays true to the character. Professor X is all about connecting with his fellow X-Men or disorienting the enemy uh, by messing with their mind. So with Professor X, what we want to do is we want to have him in a safe spot, okay? I don't know exactly what the radius of the connection would be. I will, I'll leave that open to you guys. I don't think it should be in the entire map because then you never actually move Professor X, but it should be within a proximity of either the connection of the ally or I was thinking the objective. He has to be within a certain radius of the objective. So you have to constantly be moving and hiding your Professor X, but then you can establish a connection with your ally. What that would look like is essentially you now have the POV of that respective ally. So they're moving around, they're doing whatever. That's now your camera. You can't move. You're locked into whatever they're doing. So motion sickness warning there. Uh, but really what you're trying to do is use your cooldowns, use your abilities, and then rotate between your allies to possibly give them all those buffs or you know, be on a certain ally to really make sure that they survive and do their job. I'm thinking like a like a Black Panther or somebody who's going to go in deep like magic uh, that might get into a risky situation, but can be further backed up with Professor X. So let's get into the build abilities here. So Professor X is only going to have 50 health. That is pretty much one auto attack. So you want to hide this guy. Good. If he gets found, he's dead, which is not great. It's going to break the connection. The Basic attack is going to be a shockwave, and that's going to emit from the connected ally or Professor X if you just happen to be ro rolling around with Professor X in his wheelchair, okay? <laughs> um, but if you're the connected ally, it's kind of like a cone wave that would emit from that ally. It would damage enemies. It wouldn't go very far. It's short range, and it's also a slow rate of fire. So you're going to be dealing out some damage, which is going to be great, uh, but you're not going to be the main damage dealer of the team, per se, or even of that respective ally. This is just a little bit of added bonus to give them that little boost of damage. You could also look at it like a kill secure, right? They got away with that sliver of health. Professor X, uh, the shockwave gets them and bam, they're taken out. So it has a no reload and it's got infinite ammo. It's just got a slower rate of fire, or fire to balance it out. And I'm also not looking to like completely balance these characters. I mean, like how could we? We don't have a lot of sample size for balance in this game. Um, just kind of just trying to more so stay true to the characters and find a unique take on Marvel Rivals characters. Next up is going to be the connection itself, the mind link. So how this would work is it's kind of like your emote wheel or your spray wheel. Right? So you use, uh, I think it was T at the time. So you press T and it opens up wheel and then you can choose the spray. This would be the same thing, except it opens up a wheel which shows your five other allies. And you can then select between them to establish a connection. And it's a two second cooldown, so you can't 
spam it. You can't just like switch around a whole bunch, but it's fairly quick if you just happen to choose the wrong one or somebody else needs a connection really quickly. So you can use the wheel, select an ally, and then do what you gotta do. So what can you do once you've connected with an ally? Well, you can give them a shield. So the mental shield is going to be kind of the primary support. When we look at strategists, I think it's not just about healing and supporting your allies. It's also about controlling the battlefield um, or doing something very unique. And with uh, Professor X, he is going to have a little bit of a supportability with this shield, 100 points shield, which is pretty awesome. And it's going to remove debuffs or stunts. That is super powerful. It's essentially a cleanse, as they call it in this like archetype, and, uh, and also providing a shield on an eight second cooldown. I know that this is very strong, but the reason that I think this needs to be strong and that all these abilities in general have to be pretty strong to carry the Professor X player, because that is one less body that is out on the field. You're hiding Professor X, so there's just a lot of shots coming at your allies. And typically, if your enemies can all focus in on one uh, of your allies, it's going to be worse off for them. It, it, one less body means it a lot easier for your enemies to coordinate and take down your allies. So I feel like that detriment to not having Professor X needs to be outweighed uh, by his abilities being fairly strong. So the mental shield is very, very strong and it's going to help out your allies. Then we also have the psionic blast. This is gonna be on a 10 second cooldown. It's going to be a projectile uh, that goes in a straight line right out of the connected ally or Professor X, I suppose. And it's going to damage and stun an enemy that it hits on contact. Uh, the damage is going to be more than the basic attack, but also not crazy numbers. Uh, and then the stun is going to last one second. So it's kind of like a Scarlet Witch. She's got her little orb and it dishes out three stuns in a pulse. Uh, this would just be one pulse, essentially. It's just a one second stun out of Professor X, which can be really handy if your ally is going ham deep in the back line and you got a stun, I don't know, like their target to keep them in place so they can attack them or maybe a tank that's going to disrupt them or stun them. So very handy ability. Then there's a passive ability, which is going to be telepathic learning. Uh, Professor X has vision of the enemy at all times. This is like the number one comms character, <laughs> which could be you know, really great for coordinated or really terrible for solo queue because I don't know, maybe the Professor X player doesn't have a mic <laughs> or maybe the Professor X player is telling everybody what to do because they can see the enemy. I don't know, but I think it's pretty interesting because, you know, Professor X is all about establishing those connections. He can see everybody. He listen to everybody. Um, but he's got to communicate that with his allies. But on top of that, if he's connected to an ally, they will then have vision just like he does of where the enemies are. Very strong ability, but again, I feel like it's gotta balance out with the one less body out on the field. And then lastly, we have Professor X's ultimate, and that's going to be Cerebro. He puts the helmet on and bam, his connection is boosted. But I was thinking, I'm not gonna just boost all the abilities off of you know the basic abilities when he's connected to one ally. Instead, I was thinking, why doesn't he connect with everybody? He's widespreading his connection. So all the allies get connected. Now, how does that work? Well, he's still going to just only share the point of view of whichever ally he is connected with. So let's, I don't know, let's say he's got a Black Panther on the team. He's still going to be seeing the point of view of the Black Panther. But all the other allies, when he clicks Mental Shield, they're all going to get that 100 point shield plus removal of the debuffs or stuns that they may have. And then also if he clicks Psionic Blast and shoots out a dart of, uh, of a stun and damage, well, it's going to go out of the Black Panther, but also the rest of the team which might whiff you probably won't hit anybody like maybe you will maybe you won't but if you do then it's value and that's pretty good the shield is really the main point but then also the, having the vision of the enemy at all times this is essentially giving vision to your entire team so I'm thinking of like Widowmaker from Overwatch. Her ultimate ability allows that. And essentially that's what Professor X is doing, but with a little bit of shielding on top as well. Because the ultimates in Marvel Rivals are super strong. They're very important in this game. So I felt like Cerebro, of course, had to be equally just as strong. All right, so that is going to be my Professor X. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. And I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.